Hell isn't a sin, but it is where Thor and Odin send you if you don't sacrifice 72 virgins. It's like, you didn't know that? Read the Kojiki sometime, you infidel. The battle between heaven and hell has waged eternal. I'm not sure if there's a worse way to start your movie than with narration and a fake bird. Oh, there are worse ways to begin your narration. I mean, you could do it like this. All the Dark Lord needs now is a great soldier. Just one great soldier. It's like the bad news bears for demons. Sure, everyone on the team sucks, but if you can get one person on that team that's good, it will turn them into a force. Just ask the Los Angeles Angels. All it took was for one angel to ruin everything, according to Christian mythology. Satan is the original ringer, is what I'm saying. You know, the one located in Genericsville on Main Street close to the unspecific ocean. Oh, come on. You know damn well if they told you the specific location of this base, you'd be all, in case you confused it with. Seriously, you send things when they are there and send things when they aren't. Pretty effective missile, I will admit. But is there any reason you had to ninja break into air traffic control and fire the missile from there? I get that there was proximity and a height advantage in shooting from here, but you had night vision and Xbox controller gadget things, and you're in Hong Kong, the city with the most skyscrapers per square mile than any other on Earth. You couldn't find an easier place to fire this missile from. So Jeremy is asking why would someone go to the airport in order to blow up a grounded plane instead of trying it from a skyscraper. I can't be the only one that sees how Terrence Howard that is. Also, Xbox. <laughs> this laugh. It's always a welcome sight when the actor playing the title character isn't the first name you see. And it's an even better sight when that first actor's name is John Leguizamo. This is a mainstream superhero movie with a black lead in 1997. The studio didn't think this film would do well at all, so they thought they needed to headline with the much more famous John Leguizamo. Even these days, you rarely get black leads in superhero films, and as this movie was before even the legendary Blade, we black folks were used to this bullshit by then. Yep, the Martin Sheen, because despite his established greatness, he was still several months shy of being offered the West Wing, and everyone's got bills, yo. Ah, I see what this is. Jeremy is trying to shit on this film by saying certain actors are too good to be in a movie like this. I ain't saying it's Shakespeare, but I'll remind you that Roger Ebert gave this film three and a half out of four stars. Who are you gonna trust? Ebert or Jeremy and his band of misfits at CinemaSins? Hey, f*** you, Mark A. Dot Z. Dot Dippe. Not for the movie, but for having two middle initials. The hell is that about, dog? Holy f***ing shit, you just spent the last goddamn minute complaining about the intro. That's why this video is 18 minutes long. Padding the sin count, bro. Simmons is not the problem. I don't doubt that desperate men would do anything to attain wealth and power and would sell their souls for it. I just don't think they'd believe a cigarette-smoking clown demon could provide it. Really? You don't think desperate men would trust a supernatural being to provide them supernatural benefits? Genie from Aladdin could approach me in a thong and I'm still taking them wishes. Where the hell is the ultimate weapon you promised us? They tried to 60 minutes shadow this guy, but it's clearly a member of the insane clown posse. Damn, Jeremy. You got the whole crew laughing. <laughs> insane clown posse. P.S. There's one more item on our to-do list. We need you to help recruit a very special soldier for us. Your all-time favorite killer, Al Simmons. Weren't you just talking about this guy earlier? Why not bring this up then? You might be wondering why does it matter, but they spent this whole scene talking about building a weapon that Martin Sheen already knew he had to build. And this is a PS. Violator's point was that Wynn was taking too long to build his weapon, but after seeing the destruction caused by Simmons, Violator and his master decided they wanted to recruit him. It's pretty simple. Why do you want him? Why do you people always question why ask why? But how is so much more fun. Okay, so how do you want it? Not seeing how that's funnier. And it's actually less likely to get me the answer I was looking for with the original question, you dick. Think about it. He's saying he wants Wynn to ask how does he want him to kill Al. Clown is a demon. He takes pleasure in the morbid and frankly disgusting. Also times three. Under this white dude's picture, there's a caption about Michael Jordan. And under this white woman's picture, there's a caption about Will Smith. So maybe Get Out happened earlier than we thought. These are the pictures of the writers, dude. But still, Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. The airport kill zone was supposed to be clear of civilians. I know he just got news about the civilians and he's mad about it, but didn't he see the civilians with his high-tech headgear earlier? Or does his headgear only detect bad guys? How the hell is this a serious question? You are showing a screenshot of what he saw. His intel was that everyone there outside of the target was free game. You know, the bodyguards and stuff. 
this she's got a gun in her underwear, Sean, is all about titillating you and has nothing to do with the story that sees this guy soon becoming an all-powerful hell agent. I would say that it's actually about showing you this chick is a badass femme fatale, but the only reason I'm including this in is to titillate my audience. Or just myself, because I love stockings. What the f*** is this? Why does he have an ashtray in his pet scorpion bowl? It's like, how can we make the Martin Sheen character seem more evil? I thought this made him seem nice and relatable, because fuck scorpions. Also, this is foreshadowing Spawn joining Mortal Kombat, so I'd have removed his sin. See you in hell, Al. I really don't think there was enough time for President Bartlett and Julie Cooper Nickel to get off the boat. They just casually walked out while the damn thing exploded. And it's not like they had Wonder Woman's invisible jet waiting to take them out of here before this place blew. First of all, this isn't a goddamn boat. It's a chemical plant. And second, you cut out the part of the scene that shows Wynn was the one that detonated the plant, meaning he knew he'd be out of harm's way when it blew up. Yeah, right. You know, for someone that was ambushed, burned to death, and woke up in the rainy worst part of the city from Blade Runner, this guy sure is kind of an asshole. Yeah, I mean, you would think all those terrible things happening to a person would make them the nicest guy on the planet. He sets out to reclaim his humanity. Okay, sure, but he saw his reflection in the water. He knows his face looks like an avocado had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Doesn't he know his lady is not only not going to recognize him, but also likely to call the cops and probably a priest? Which is precisely why he went there and didn't try to communicate with Wanda. And I love how you just stole Deadpool's jokes, but when you tried sinning that movie, you sin those jokes. Of course, f***ing Toto can still smell his old master. Years later, and through the layer of burned, reincarnated skin. You're misusing words here. Reincarnated skin would mean his skin grew back anew. As he's clearly deformed from being burned, that's obviously not the case. All right, kids, I got more tricks than your local hooker. So how did Wanda and Terry end up hiring the clown that makes hooker jokes, drinks, smokes, and has jagged teeth for this birthday party? Are they blinded to this because of some sort of spell or something? As with you and your videos, normal people probably don't look too closely. And 1,763 more sins for this movie being a dick. Damn, son, the sin count just went from 42 to 2,488 because of a fart joke. You patent the sin count, bro? Good God. If I were Satan, I would be embarrassed at this CGI hellscape he calls home. Call a f***ing decorator or Stan Winston and get this cleaned up. Sure, this CGI is pretty bad, but it still isn't as bad as this. Everything spoilers, wrong, duh, with? This shit was not thought out. Yes, I will need your army! Anything for Wanda! You might even say, for Wanda forever. <sighs> Just think of me as your guardian angel. As long as we don't have to think of you as Luigi ever, ever again. Hey man, I know this movie gets shit on a lot, but I honestly can't think of a more 90s actor to portray Luigi. You might even say the casting of Super Mario was Fight time! Excellent! What is this? I've got to know, I've got to know, what is this place that I have found? What is... Skip that people can still die, Schmecky. All I gotta do is cut off your head. What do you call it when the fart clown spits out the rules of the film's universe instead of normal dialogue? Clown's position? John Leguizam's position? Aren't you the same guy that cries about not knowing the rules in basically every movie dealing with superheroes? This freak stuff's gonna come in handy when I get my hands on win. Glad you could remind yourself and us of that fact. My IQ dropped about 100 points after just 30 minutes of this movie. So your current IQ is negative 250? He pushes this guy to the left, then goes around him on the right, only to turn left. Why not just not push the guy at all and go left? Because only pussies allow someone to stand in front of them and then actively try to avoid them. Considering our relationship, shouldn't you know all about that? Sometimes putting words on your screen to tell us where we are is actually more confusing than saying nothing. Really? I mean, even if you've never read the comics, the film states early on that A6 is the organization that Wynn runs, so it's actually quite obvious what these words mean. Also, the clown left and said he'd return when Spawn's armor had hardened, so he immediately attacks a place? With soft armor? I know, just because you said armor twice that you think those two things you tried to correlate, well, correlate, but they don't. Spawn doesn't give a shit about his armor being hard or not. His goal is to kill Wynn. The Violator was the one that was concerned about hardened armor. Al has been killing fools without armor for years. Little girl just had a birthday, didn't she? Is terrible facial hair part of the uniform for this place? Sheen looks like he's auditioning for Wes Bentley's Hunger Games role, and DB's goatee is getting harassing phone calls from a dozen better film goatees. This is what CinemaSins has been reduced to. Judging men's facial hair. What is this, Lipstick Alley? You sent me to hell, Jason! Movie subliminally advertises Jason Goes to Hell four years after it came out. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that has nothing to do with this movie at all. She shoots guns at the dead guy from hell and he runs to hide from them. Even though I don't think bullets will matter much in the battle Spawn has ahead of him. Didn't the clown tell him that he could only die by getting his head chopped off? Jeremy has apparently never heard of instincts. I don't care who you are, if you suddenly get superpowers and someone tries to shoot at you, your first instinct would be to avoid getting shot, especially if you're a hardened soldier. That thing is Simmons! I want you to nail him now! 
What good is f***ing him gonna do? I mean, unless you have that vagina dentata thing. Oh, you meant kill him. CinemaSins sure loves wasting our time with cringy sex jokes, don't they? Where you're going, every day is Halloween. New York City Fashion Week? Joke would have been objectively better if you said Comic-Con or even the Met Gala. My favorite part about the wrong dead guy turned hell warrior superhero movie is the scene where he done all the shooting with the machine guns in both hands. That's exactly how I would have pictured hell demons fighting, actually. Except if you knew anything about Spawn, you'd know that he actually does frequently use guns. You know, because he's a former Marine? <laughs> I don't care what kind of intricate labyrinth the paramedics and firefighters have created with their cars. There cannot be a private place for the Violator and Jason to have a conversation here. You gonna tell us why not? Why the hell do you think you can just say things and get away with it, man? Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Movies should never have time for this. But this video does. Bonnie's funny, he's our man. If you can't kill him, no one can. Go funny, go funny. As to the peak to the age of the one, as to the peak to the age of the one. Go funny, go funny. The one must choose to murder when and release the virus. Then my army. True or false? Did you or did you not overly complicate this f***ing plan, man? False. Malboja's plan is to gather as many human souls as possible from Earth so that he can create an army of Hellspawn and begin Armageddon. As we are all now acutely aware... Coronavirus! A virus is a pretty decent way to kill a lot of people, and Spawn Killing Win is going to release a virus worldwide. Again, it's pretty simple. That's fast. Best. Ah, another hero has a heart of gold cliche, even though this hero was a hell demon with almost no redeeming qualities. When you say almost no redeeming qualities, that means there are some redeeming qualities, which nullifies your point because this means he can be redeemed. Words have meanings. Put down my dog. Movie inspires the entire John Wick franchise. Normally I would go, Jeremy makes a pop culture yada yada yada, but this sin implies that the creation of the John Wick franchise is a bad thing. That's worth these many sins. Al Simmons knew that violence only makes for more pain and suffering, no matter which side gives the orders. He tried to leave off killing, give himself a second chance. We saw none of these character traits in Al before he died. Sure, he was upset about killing the innocent civilians, but... And let me stop you right there, because you just contradicted yourself. I love the smell of burning asphalt in the morning! That clown, he's so full of great pop culture references, including movies starring one of his co-stars. But over the years, how has this guy watched all these movies? Does he go to movie theaters or rent stuff at Blockbuster to pass the time when he's not middlemanning? He's a 400-year-old demon with vast magical abilities. Are you seriously asking how he was able to watch a movie? He stands up from the crash of the spawn cycle to face the imminent attack of the clown truck, and I hate myself for typing any of that. Here's a hint. Don't type any of that. What would happen if Violator just killed Jason right now? I realize that means that they've broken their bargain, but really, what are the consequences? That would release Spawn from his obligation to serve as the leader of Hell's army. You know, no big deal. Either you join Hell's army or she dies. I thought he already agreed to join and lead Hell's army back when he first went undead. Did I misread that scene? No, but you somehow missed the scenes after that scene where he decided not to work for Hell. Like, oh, I don't know, the one where you were stating this movie inspired John Wick. So he can burn it down. You filthy little piece of vermin. It makes you think I would join your army. You can take this army of yours and shove it. Well, apparently Spawn can do that. It's sort of an accidental ex machina. Oh, and he knows how to fly, too. He learned some real intricate in the last minute of this battle. Except Cogliostro explained that Spawn's armor can essentially do whatever he set his mind to. Having magical abilities is not an ex machina. This is like sinning Superman for using freeze breath. I mean, it's not like he could have just gouged out Zod's eyes or used his ice breath power he somehow didn't discover in this movie to freeze Zod's heat ray or even Zod himself. Wait a minute, you sinned Superman for not using freeze breath, which means you would have sinned Spawn for not using these abilities. Do you guys see how contradictory these sins are? Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if the writers of these sins were named Peter, John, Luke, and Matthew. Pathetic fools, I've come for your souls. I don't think so. 